Mailbag time again. Oh, no, no. oh yes it is. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. It's just right there on the desk. Fish for new here. Don't forget to click the bell icon. Get notified about new videos. Look at these. Ah, okay. These are the same. I think they might be. Yeah, they are. So these are just a bunch of ferrites for noise suppression. The idea is you clip these around things like AC power leads, things like that, to help improve filtering. This helps a bit of noise rejection. So I actually got these because of my calibration stack. It's not a rack, it's a stack because they're all just part of them on top of them. So got my multimeters and my calibrator and stuff like that on the other side of the room there, which I've done videos on showing that before. And I actually want to put a whole bunch of ferrites around all the power cables. So they've all got some ferrite filters on all the AC leads, just in case it matters. I don't know if it's actually going to do any damn thing. It may be, it does absolutely nothing. It'll probably do nothing. Yes, hecklers. And we'll see what happens. I don't know. I probably won't be able to tell the difference, but I just think it's a smart thing to do. That's why these things exist in the first place. Yeah, my filtering is an important aspect in reducing noise going back in the AC line. And I do tend to basically put these kinds of devices on everything. So I've got them on all sorts of power cables. All my power cables are across my bench here. Everything on my bench has got ferrites on. And I'm just trying to keep noise down as much as I can because trying to do precise measurements in a noisy environment is pretty hard. So every little thing I can do to help that is a good thing. Even if it's insignificant amounts of improvement, I'm still trying to keep it down. Because who knows, maybe if I put enough of these on everything, it'll get rid of any EMI, which may be getting transferred between equipment through the mains. And having these on all the power leads means there's a chance it's improving things. If you've got any experience with these kinds of things, and actually know a bit more about ferrites and how they work on power leads and, and the filtering system, please comment down below and, and fill me in, because I'm a bit naive on this. It's only me. Yeah, just, just fill me in. Looks interesting, it's just sticking out the packet already. <laughs> uh, uh, it's um, a hammer. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's curious. Now, I went through a little phase there. I was doing some panel working work on a bit of a chassis, and it's a bit burnt up. Is the one of the Agilent E5810As, which I picked up, and it had some damage to the chassis, and I wanted to strain out. One of the problems I had is I didn't actually have any fine enough hammers, right? So I had to, you know, improvise a little bit and work, but I got the job done. I was thinking, oh, I need some little hammers and stuff, so I can get into these little corners and tight spaces and things like that. So if you're trying to get right into a corner of a casing, you know, the 90 degree corner, where you can't really get a round face into it, I thought well, I'd get some of these little hammers. I thought, well, maybe something fine like this would be handy. Something really small might do something. It's a bit smaller than I thought it was going to be there. One twenty ohm resistors, hundred pieces, O six O three size. So I'm waiting for various parts to arrive. I'm still waiting for something for projects I want to do. I'm waiting for some eighty six point six K. I think it was or eighty six point six ohm. I can't remember what it was. Is the last resistor I'm waiting for now. It's the last set of parts I'm waiting for. Once those arrive, I can do this project, which I've had sitting there waiting for me to do for mm, two or three weeks now. Watch out for that. It's for the Siglent oscilloscopes. It's a pretty cool project. It's not my design. It's somebody else's design. I'm just copying it. I'm using their design, and I'm making it for my use. It's their design. Okay, that's a serial to parallel converter board, and here are some LCD displays. Hopefully not broken. In fact, to put them face to face is probably a good thing. No signs of any cracks. So these are really commonly used. They're really cheap to get these days. They don't cost much at all. Really handy things to have for various projects. You can use them all kinds of little jobs, especially if you're using Arduino or ESP32s. I mean, obviously these days you can get the TFT displays and these nice high resolution graphic displays. You know, those are really good. But sometimes you just want something simple and cheap and compact. But sometimes you want something like this. And it's actually times where you have to have something like this because of the complexity of circuitry, that sort of thing, or just space constraints. 
or even you don't need much you just need a two line display or even a one line display you don't need that complexity in my case one of the reasons I got these because I was repairing the as I already mentioned the E5810A and actually used these displays in them and I actually thought I had some of these went to go and use one I actually struggled I had to pull apart something else in order to repair it because I didn't actually have any displays and these are exactly the displays I needed so now I've got some of these in stock at least so I've got some displays so next time I do need to make something or repair something which uses one of these I've got them in stock these are just basic parallel displays really easy and this bag here is a serial converter it does parallel output so that connects to the display basically piggybacks on the back I'm guessing it goes that way around, like that, and then you can have a serial input instead. I think it's I squared C input. I can't remember. It's got SDA, SCL on there, so I guess it is I squared C. And then you can just drive serial data to it instead of parallel data. So you only use two pins on your microcontroller. Very handy. Good to have these things on stock because you never quite know what you're going to be doing in the future. If you're a bit of a maker and you tinker around with things and you use microcontrollers. Having things like this on hand, excellent thing to do. And I have links down below for these things, obviously, in my mailbag links down there. So go and check those out. <laughs> oh, whoops, I think I covered deep there. <laughs> so these were suggested to me by someone. I can't remember one of my Patreons or just or you can comment on one of my previous videos. So these are rubber mounts for fans. When I was working my Proskit SS331 desoldering station, I had a quite a noisy fan when I got it. I did a video on that, showing the modifications to that to make it a bit more suited to the way I want to use it. There it is sitting over here. I put a switch on the front panel, that kind of thing, and then replace the fan because it's a bit noisy. So what I actually wanted to do though is put rubber mounts on the fan. I did do like a, a system where it was kind of mounted a bit more softly, and someone suggested these things, rubber mounts. You just basically pull them through and they lock in and it sandwiches in bits of rubber instead of using hardware mounting you use these things so you've got different sizes and you can get all different lengths and stuff like that to suit different fan sizes and stuff like that so that's what I picked up a few different ones so now I actually have a stock of these so you've got a single side so if you've only got one edge of the fan to mount up you can clip it in like that you just feed it through and pull it and it locks it in and it will just rubber mount the thing so it takes a lot of the noise out of it because a lot of the fan noise is actually coming from the chassis where the fan is vibrating slightly and it makes the chassis vibrate and it just creates that noise you know you get that noise that basically resonates through the chassis of the item it's mounted in and that's the idea of rubber mounting these things got loads of those now lifetime supply let's see what's in here oh two packages so you've got a bonus mail bag here extra packages so let's have another one Raspberry Pi 3, well, 2B plus it is. Let's do that. Here we go. Right, the back opens, not the front. So it's a 3B plus. Now, I've already got a couple of these things. I've shown them previously in other mailbags and in some other projects I've done as well. This is basically me building another web server. So I've already got two, one which I built into a metal case and that sort of stuff. And I did fans on it and all kinds of little projects and I did an SSD on it. And it's running as a web server. For running events and I wanted to make a duplicate web server exactly identical and I wanted to have a spare Raspberry Pi 3 B plus I don't currently have a spare one so I thought I'd get one that way I've got one spare sitting around in case I ever need it well I can't even cut through that tape so. <laughs> maybe there's no tape here maybe it's just a box Oops. <clears throat> Ah, excellent. I really hope this is the right thing. Well, wow, that's actually been used as well, so used motor, but that's fine. As long as it actually works, it feels okay, it feels fine. Excellent. Now, this is for a project, well, a repair project. So, I have been asked to fix a printer, a thermal printer for someone. And I've already done some footage on it, and I've gone through and done a lot of diagnostics and figured out what's going on with it. And to cut a story short, I found the motor, stepper motor which inside it, is basically knackered, it's binding up, you can spin it, 
and you feel it gets tight and loose and tight and loose and this one feels absolutely fine this is, you can feel the steps in it but the stepper motor on the one I was trying to repair it was quite stiff it was actually quite a bit of effort to turn it yeah it just wasn't behaving properly sometimes it worked fine sometimes it wouldn't you just spin it spin it spin it and something would bind up so I know inside it's definitely bad anyway I managed to source a new stepper motor it's a used stepper motor and hopefully it's all correct it should be right I hope one way to find out and that's actually finish doing that repair video so watch out for that video coming up where I strip apart a thermal printer service it all based on what I can see is wrong and try to repair it with this part when that comes out I don't know it could be before this video it could be after this video I don't know but it's interesting the way a sticker here has had the, the markings basically removed or something I'm not sure maybe this is where they've cleaned it maybe they've, where they've cleaned it it's gone a bit dodgy but it looks about right so I'm hopeful last thing now this has got a bit of a bag taped to the outside the reason is that this was actually attached to the outside inside an envelope which had my address in the outside so I've also pulled it off so this was sent to me by a guy from the EV blog forum who makes a circuit board and stuff which I'll get to because I wanted some of these parts he's just I'll get some of these because he's like a Datron guy he knows a lot about Datron gear and it's just I'll get some of these diodes these reference diodes unfortunately the person I wanted to buy them from wouldn't ship them to me so he did me a favour he bought them on my behalf had them shipped to him and then he sent them to me when he sent me this so these are some reference diodes of Datrons pretty cool because apparently these are known for going bad there you go ZN458 14th week 95 hopefully new old stock so let's try and get into this thing So this is a Detron extender board. So this fits on a couple of slots inside the Detron 4700 calibrator series. It does 4800s as well, I think. You can just drop this into the appropriate slot, apart from a couple of them, because they don't have the same socketing. And then you can use this to extend a card and help you to work on it, to actually do some repairs. So I actually needed this thing a month or so ago. Well, a couple of months ago now, probably. By the time I see this video. I managed to do without... I thought well, I'll get one anyway because it would be nice to have one in the future. So if I do need to repair the Datron calibrator again, I've got a extender card to do it. You always have to have these parts on hand whilst you can get them. It pays to get them because you never know. You don't assume that you'd always be able to get the thing you need. If you can see an extender card for something you own, get it now because in two years time when it breaks and you need that card, the card may not be available anymore. This is by Ken, anyway, made by Ken. He goes by Volvo Nut on EV Blog Forum, and he's also on eBay, and he's selling these on eBay, but this is a prototype board, I believe. He's selling proper ones, which is obviously the refined design, but I believe this one's a prototype board he sent me. So this is one of his older boards, which I think it's got a different fitment on the sockets. I think the sockets are a bit tighter than the ones he sells now, something like that. So what he sells now is an evolution of this particular board. That's what I believe, anyway. So if you have a Datron, you need a visor card, Go and look on eBay, because it's on there. Go and search it up. Just do a search for Datron and the model number, and it will come up. Thank you very much, Ken. Ken's also the guy which has been very generous, and he actually scanned in the Datron calibration manual, the other volume from the one I've got. So I actually uh, picked up a manual for the Datron calibrator. It turned out that Ken actually purchased the other manual, which went with it. I've got one part of that set, and he's got the other part of that set. I mean, the actual same set owned by the same person has got his name on it. So he actually very generously scanned it in for me and emailed that to me and sent it to me. So I've got a copy of that electronically, thanks to Ken, who's very generous. I didn't ask anything for it, he just wanted to help out, which is great. Nice guy. It's also the person who gave me the heads up about the Datron 1082 from eBay, which I purchased, which turned out to be a really good purchase. It was a good price for what it was. I was really lucky there. Thanks to Ken, giving me a heads up saying it was there really quickly. He noticed it straight away and I jumped on it as soon as I saw it because... Those things do not hang around when they come up. So I was lucky there, and that's because of Ken being generous again and helping me out. If you do need a, a wiser car for your Datron calibrator, go and look on eBay. I suggest you go and buy one. Don't forget to click like and subscribe as well so you get to see my future videos, and clicking like helps the channel out a little bit. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.